Welcome to the Madelon Avenue School District Board of Education Committee for the whole meeting of September 13, 2021. Time is now 6.30 p.m. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? So 
I, I my, myself, the board, everyone else on the dais, our transportation department will work continuously until we can get everyone that we can on buses, and you have my word on that. However, it may take extra time, a couple of extra days. All I ask for patience from me, you have my word, that I will not stop until we get to the point where we need to be. However, it is not fraught, it is fraught with difficulty, but we are working through that. And in some cases, that means all through the weekend, because our students are the most important thing. So we will not stop until we get to where we need. Uh, and uh, welcome everybody back. I want to thank our tremendous staff, uh, our administration, our board, um, everyone associated for the work that went in to get open. And now we're open, and our, we want to stay open and continue to move forward positively. So thank you. For the board president's report, first I wanted to thank all the students, the staff, administrators, and parents and guardians for a great first couple of days back in school and for your patience as we're transitioning back in. As we've stated previously, our priority remains ensuring our students get back into the classroom safely for full-time in-person learning. It's also been exciting to see the sports and clubs starting back up again. I know um, middle school and I believe high school as well has some activities starting and sports have been in full year for the past few weeks, actually since summer. Um, so good luck to all those participating this week. Also, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to continue having in-person back-to-school nights at each of the schools. It's a great time to meet your child's teachers, see the classrooms, walk their schedules. I know I went to the sixth grade one at Mounds, um, first day of school, and it was great. Because you, and there were so many people there, everybody got to walk the schedule. Um, it was a great night. Just a couple of reminders. The update letters that are sent out from your child's school are a really good resource. Um, they've got helpful logistical information, important dates of what's coming up at the school, PTO information, and more. Um, so it's a really great resource. Just a reminder that the grab and go, go breakfast and lunch are free again this year. But we do still ask that you please fill out the free and reduced lunch forms as it does help the district with our federal funding. And finally, the strategic planning process kicks off for the community this month, September 30th. It's at 6.30 p.m. at the high school. Another great opportunity for community members to have an active role in developing vision and goals for the district for the next five years. And with that, we'll move to curriculum and instruction. Mr. Bobbier. Thank you. Good evening. Beginning with Part A Travel, one staff member attending handle care recertification training, one staff member attending the NJ's ASA Leadership Conference, um, and two additional staff members attending uh, the NJASA Women's Leadership Conference. Ten staff attending the TS Goal Training, which is part of our preschool Tools of the Mind program. Moving on to Part B, we have one resolution on the agenda tonight for asking the board to approve the partnership agreement between the Madeline Avenue Regional School District Keys Academy and the Florida Virtual School to provide blended learning and online learning options on an as-needed basis for the 21-22 school year. This cost is a not to exceed amount. We only pay for the courses as needed um, if you cannot fill those courses in district or if there is a need for credit that the student needs to take, they have that option. And that's all for curriculum instruction. Thank you. Special Services, Ms. Perez. Good evening, everyone. Under item number one, we're asking for board approval for the agreement with the following provider for the 21-22 school year on an as-needed basis. And LDTC for costs are listed, including the evaluation and the effective dates of um, September 14th until June 30th of 2022. Under item number two, we're asking for board approval for the agreement with the following provider, the commission of the line and visual impaired for the 21-22 school year to provide educational services for additional, for additional students um, who is blind and visually impaired. Um, I'd like to note that this was a, um, a recent transfer um, that we received with the moment. That concludes special student services. Thank you. Personnel, Mr. Levin. Thank you, good evening. Uh, we'd like to ask the board to take action on two walking items. Has the hard copy in front of them. Walk in item number one for action under appointments, direct the board to approve the following staff members that are listed for curriculum revisions for summer 21's 
school year, so far, school year 2020. Action item number two is on page two. We're actually to ask the board to approve the following home instruction. The students as listed with the home instructors, total hours and effective dates as listed. Uh, those two other items are for action. On to the personnel agenda, we're going to the whole not for action. Other section has resignations and retirements for 21 22. We have five resignations that are listed with their effective presentation dates. Item B, the new maxims for the 21 school year, once that number listed with type of leave and effective dates. Under section C, appointments, number one, new hire for 21 22 school year, uh, placeholders, which are on the bottom of page one, continue to top page two. Placeholders are listed, and we expect to have names filled in for the right. Under item two, extracurricular activities for 21 22 school year, under academic activities, one name listed for cap control and ticket seller for games for the 21 22 school year. Under items three, four, five, six, and seven on page two, um, no additional items at the moment. Continuing on page three, under items eight, nine, no additional information. Item number 10, additional summer recommendations for summer 21 and 21 22 school year. Uh, two staff members listed were used as substitute teachers for the SY. Nothing for number 11. Under item D, other, one, the hit report from the previous meeting, no hit report is reported. Item number two, salary adjustments, one staff member with the salary adjustment for 21 22 school year. And item three, perfect attendance payout for one staff member who earned perfect attendance for the previous school year. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to accept the personnel agenda? I'll move second. I'll second. Okay, walk-in items. Okay, policy, Mr. Lehman. Thank you. Under policy, we have one policy listed for second read and adoption this evening. Listed policy 6.8.1. Then beneath that, we have several policies listed for first three. Our policies are listed 0, 1, 6, 0 0.6, 6.48.13, 5.1.1, 5200, 53.30, 53.30.04, 53.30.05, 56.10, 56.20. These policies are listed for first three. Adoption will be at the September round. That completes the policy. Thank you. Finance, Ms. Case. Good evening. No actions will be taken on finance tonight. Uh, we will be asking on the ramp for actions taken on payroll for the month of August as well as the diligence for September. We will be asking for approval for the major fund sets for June and July as well as all the corresponding reporting. On page two, we will be asking for the reason the settlement agreement, between the board and the union. Page 5 will be the RFP that will be awarded after we open up bids on Wednesday for a new special services legal counsel. Uh, 6 will be hopefully entering into an energy savings contract with a new company called Synergistics that is looking to help us save approximately up to $1 million over the course of the contract. On page 3, we're looking for the tuition contract agreement with the Monarch County Vocational School. Right now, you'll see that we don't have numbers of students. We are just ensuring that we have everybody accounted for as we're well in high school and in transportation. And 8 will be the acceptance of the grant for social justice, thinking about uh, $1,200. And number 9 is the allocation for the American Rescue Plan with the IDA funds.
going down, it says 2.5, and then the number is 12, and then it says 30 hours per week.
people may qualify for if they're under that state. I, I can talk to you about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. 
Foundation for Good Mass Foundations. Um, and I wasn't sure that Ms. Perez was going to reach out to me about that. But um, Mrs. Moore sent me the form, the head nurse, and I filled it out immediately by our physicians. And um, I've yet to hear back from anyone. I've left Mrs. Perez and you know, I've emailed the nurse um, and White Road, Ms. Cruz, and Mrs. Moore. No one's returning my phone calls or emails. Um, I just would like to know the time frame of when we will know if you know any more information is needed or what the status is and know that they will receive. And just I did get one phone call from a uh, secretary on Friday at 3 30, but she wasn't sure why she was calling me, so we really didn't get that far. And um, so that's my first question. Sure. Can I just ask for clarification? Sure. The first question was um, special accommodations for your child. You, you got the medical information, yes. you sent it in roughly. September 1st, I believe. September 1st, okay. Yeah. You haven't heard back from it. No. I can I can address that okay. if, if would we have your name. Okay. You will you will be called first thing in the morning. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just had another question as well. Can you provide the doctors and the, um, the physician, the head physician of the school's name and credentials to me or email this to me or whatever you need to do? Absolutely. When we, I don't know if it will be myself, but whoever called you in the morning can supply you at that time. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I I I'm a little upset though. One thing that I have to come to a public forum to get that information, but thank you. You're welcome. Do you mind if I ask your name again? Sorry, the spelling of your last name. Z U P P A. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, I, I I really wanted to get through this, and I know I'm gonna three minutes, so um, I'm gonna get to it. I just want to make sure that I get to speak, and then you guys can answer, okay? Because I know we're limited. So my name is Cindy Santora. I'm on Lloyd Road, if you really want to know me, I'm kind of coming to the meeting, so uh, let me get started. On August 27th, we received an email from the district about COVID policies. One policy stated the difference between quarantine vaccinated and unvaccinated students. Vaccinated students do not have to quarantine after exposure, while unvaccinated students have to quarantine 10 days or 7 with a negative test. I have a problem with this. Why are we segregating students based on vaccination status when we specifically spoke about this at the last meeting and we were told this was not going to happen? Let's define segregation as per Oxford. Segregation, the action or state of setting someone or something apart from other people or things or beings set apart. Okay, let's get into it. I thought we agreed there would be no segregation. In August, the CDC recommended that even fully vaccinated individuals should be tested five days after close contact exposure. It seems that people in power are picking and choosing which recommendations that they think works best for them, like almost, like almost they have a motive for which science they wish to enforce. Why don't vaccinated individuals have to quarantine? Let's talk about breakthrough COVID, which are positive results in fully vaccinated people. As of May 1st, 2021, the CDC stopped tracking breakthrough COVID cases. Why would they do that when you can turn on any news channel and we are force-fed current case numbers? That going forward, the CDC will only be tracking hospitalizations and deaths in vaccinated people. When asked if vaccinated individuals could spread the illness, we get a firm, maybe. They did not get a chance to run this study, but a study is currently in the works. But as of July 27, the CDC director, Walensky, said, new data shows the variant behaves uniquely different from past strains of the virus, indicating that some vaccinated people infected with the Delta variant may be contagious and spread the virus to others. This was during a CNBC interview. New Jersey is tracking breakthrough cases. They just don't have to report them to the CDC. Let's look at Murphy's recent press conference for guidance. As of August 30th, 18,300 fully vaccinated individuals had breakthrough infections. The week of August 23rd to the 29th, there were 2,609 breakthrough cases. Israel, which has the highest vaccinated population, is tracking 7,500 new cases daily. Unlike the U.S., they are tracking vaccinated and unvaccinated people. Nearly one out of every 150 
people in Israel have COVID. Can this be why the CDC is no longer tracking breakthrough cases? I don't know. So, get to the point, Cindy. The bottom line is that segregating students by vaccination status is wrong. There has been no studies that say vaccinated people do not spread the illness. Vaccinated people are testing positive. Murphy told us that himself. The CDC said that, that vaccinated individuals may spread the virus. I'm all for choice. I'm giving you these numbers not because I want the world vaccinated. I'm giving you these numbers to show you how foolish these rules are. At this point, I really wonder how they are even coming up with them. I'm done with COVID fever. I'm done. And ready to return to a normal school year. I hope that you continue to pressure Murphy and the New Jersey Department of Health on these asinine policies that frankly do not follow the science. Thank you. Thank you. talked about it is we are not segregating the children. We are following the quarantining guidance for both the health department, New Jersey Department of Health, as well as the CDC. And we're following those rules. The good news is this year, based on the latest guidance, is that they only children only need to be quarantined when they're fully masked if they're under that three feet. Um, and we are trying as best as possible to keep it at three feet as best as possible. Um, so hopefully the quarantine will be a lot less this time around than when everything initially started. But again, we're being, this, this is quarantine. It's not segregating. The kids are being treated exactly the same in the classrooms. We're not separating them. Um, they're all being treated the same. No, I just wanted to, to verify and clear that up. Lori Pinkle, 168 Glen Grove. You didn't really want to ask that, but if you really technically aren't treating all the children the same, and if you're going to have certain children only have to quarantine, other children not have to quarantine and leave the school, but that's not the subject. I want to know for high school that there is no more woodwork shop. We couldn't find another teacher's display. What are you uh, planning on doing about getting some other kind of class similar to that, or like maybe electrical, or kids who are not just only academic? And that's a fantastic question. Um, you, you are right, we have been unable to find anyone and we've been putting advertisements everywhere. And um, we are looking into alternatives. However, that also includes um, going out to find someone to teach these subjects that, as it stands right now, um, not only at on Aberdeen, but most districts are hard pressed to find um, people in those fields that are going into teaching. But, um, we are we are working to find alternatives. Yes. Are there alternatives that we could have to? I mean, this could be maybe electrical or it, it, something else. It, it, like exactly. Or? So if you're if you're think, thinking a return to I'm 53 years old. So when I was in school, we had a shop class, right? You could learn how to fix your car. You could learn any number of things. Those are avenues that we are exploring right now. Yes. So if I I, 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 I can't make promises, but that's the direction we're moving in. So we have people working on it right now, yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Hello, I'm Diana Pell, Aberdeen. Um, going back to the, uh, the quarantine rules, um, the slightly different request is that you know, vaccines are still not available for students under 12, and but at this point, 18 months in, um, many many children have had COVID and recovered. Uh, so I ask before you vote on the road forward policy today that you consider amending it to allow for students who have recovered from a documented case of COVID to be treated similarly to vaccinated students when it comes to quarantining uh, due to a close contact. Uh, rather than denying an in-person school unnecessarily for an extended period. I'm about to reply. Um, yes, absolutely, certainly. And I would just ask if you could put that 
get an email to me or call me tomorrow so I can get the correct verbiage now. I don't want to lose anything in translation. I know, and I'm saying yes, but I'm asking her for the specifics of what she just said. Hold on. from a documented case of COVID to be treated similarly to vaccinated students when it comes to quarantining due to a close contact. And the reason being that rather than deny them in-person school unnecessarily for an extended period. Understood, and that's something we can certainly look at. If, if, and if you could either call me or send an email or so I can just get the particular articulation so I know what I need to do. Sure, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. So that is 
never been brought up any type of group that meeting that I've ever witnessed here and other districts and other states, and that's scary. Everybody's so quick and easy to just slap a mask on a bunch of people, but that makes me really nervous, especially now I'm a middle schooler who's staying after school. I don't know what authorized personnel, where they're supposed to be, who's monitoring them. It's not like we're a casino, we need that sophisticated security. We don't.
said, all right, we'll be here for the end of the end of September, and we'll just say it's the end of September 1st, because you know, at the end of the day, that's not the way we operate. So it, it was it was purchased, it was bid on with the premise that it would be done before the school year started. As we had got through the summer and realized that the, the, the true nature of the supply chain issues, um, it became more and more apparent that we were going to get pushed back a couple of weeks. Um, however, um, we're looking for homecoming to be that day, um, and the track to be done before that. I mean, the track's going down right now. So, because I know they started pulling up. Oh, we were. The day after graduation. The day after graduation, that field is up. Um, I know for a fact because I went down there to make sure it got pulled up, and I went back day after day after day, um, and started to feel the same frustration you are um, once we got further into it. Um, and then start talking to people and, well, you know, it's a supply chain issue. We can't get the materials that we need. Um, you know, it's a synthetic field. All of those synthetic materials, I, you know, I, I, I could talk, I I could talk around that. Yeah. And you, it's a great question. And the it was First, well, the homecoming is the first week in October. Okay. Do you mind if you get your last name? I'm sorry. Abby What's it? 
is he willing, like, you know, you should find out, I mean, not that we're going to answer, if he is willing to be rival. And the other thing about the safety thing did come to my mind um, just recently as well. I do drug tests for people, they give me their ID. I have to tell them to pull down their mask because really in this day and age, anyone can be doing anything. So, you know, when I go to pick up my kid, you know, my daughter, I have to pick her up the bus, you know, it is a little bit alarming. You know, kids will just run out, they're excited to be out of school. Like, you know, they've been in there all day, they have this mask on, they can't wait to get out. It is a bit alarming to me that no one's really, I mean, they're like, oh, hey, it's been taking a few days to move around, but like, technically, somebody can look like me with a mask on, like, dark hair, you know, they like, don't, I don't really know the procedures. So I just feel like, God forbid something happens to a kid. I mean, human trafficking is a real thing, kidnapping is a real thing, it's more common than just, you know, saying that. And the fact that like, you're only wearing a mask that was banned anywhere prior to this COVID thing, the safety issue really is hard. And I really think that like, we need to address that. I don't, you know, like I said, I know you guys think it's kind of tight, and I don't want to go back and forth with you guys anymore because I get it. There's only one way out, I know the way out. Most people probably do as well. But at the end of the day, what happens if my kid gets kidnapped? Who am I going after? I'm coming after you guys, you know? And this is the way to <laughs> to, to your point, uh, I have on any number of occasions, um, one sending a letter on behalf of the Monmouth County superintendents. Um, I have sent various other um, correspondents as, asking for clarifications, answers to the DOE, um, and uh, I haven't received anything yet. Um, and. Uh, to your point also, when your initial points about the, um, the busting, um, I can say that we've had at least four instances with third party people that we contracted with that didn't show up on game day. So um, this is also something we are really, really fighting about right now with these third party companies. So if, if you could get in touch with me more about your specific um, issues regarding it, um, I'll do everything in my power to get that squared away. In regards to the bus, it was, it was that one day, and I put up several times that day, like a couple 30 minutes at a time while I was at work. But I wanted to meet, so now, now that it's like, oh yeah, don't worry, the son will come home on the bus. Well, will he? Because nobody needs to pick him up, so we're not on the list, clearly. I mean, when I drove him, so I, I stored his bus I'm, I'm not, out of school. Well, I don't know who told you that. That's so. okay. It's, you know, it's, 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 he got home that day, and okay. sure, it, it, on the bus now, okay. but the whole point was that like no communication whatsoever, and I had to be at school with my daughter, and I have to be at work, so I'm just like, you know, it would have been one thing to say, hey, I would have been stuck when I called them the first time, they'd be like, hey, you know what, the night before we messed up and we updated and everything, and you got booted out of the system, I would have accepted that. The fact is that everyone just keeps on telling me, rain, first day of school. That just didn't drive me, or let me go with me, let's just trust everybody. So, but like I said, everything's been okay now. I just want to say I understand your frustration. Um, my daughter had to leave school on Wednesday. There was no bus for her. I didn't find out there was no bus for her until um, that morning she was not on the bus. I had to drive my daughter 40 minutes from my home to school. I had to turn back around two hours to and a half hours later to pick her back up because there was no bus to get home. The following day, there still was not a bus for her. I understood that the frustration is there, but as a parent and as a board member, there's no perks for us as well. I had to drive my daughter the next day. She was supposed to have a bus to drive her back to the high school. She waited almost two hours, missing her classes in her transitional period, because they couldn't get a bus there to pick her up when the person was leaving. The following day, the bus driver got released. So she again, on the third day, had a hard time getting to school. So I understand your frustration. And you're not alone in it because, like I said, even us sitting up here, we have children, and we all are going through the same thing. And I understood when I called you all this, the transportation people, the whole team were busy, we had our being answering the phone. And she made sure and she worked with me saying that somebody's getting here to pick your door through my first school. Because I couldn't bring my son to school on the first day of school because I had to pick my door down. So I understand what you're saying. And it is frustrating because I got three children in the district. So I just want you to understand that we do sympathize with you and we understand that. But it's not like we're alienating a child 
you know, especially someone with special services that can't get one. Yeah, if I was just mostly concerned because when they just have time, like, like I said, it's water with the bridge now. My concern was is that if they're telling me he's going to get home on the bus, he's going to get on his road and it's rushing. This kid will sit on the bus for three hours until somebody knows it's there because he doesn't know how to express that. Why am I not home yet? You know, sorry, Tom, but thank you. I know it was just me, but I'm just saying, well, come on, yeah, just say whatever, you know? Um, and then just like, again, I'm going to take back what I said about the safety of the demand issue and the health issue of it, because it is a medical device for sick people, you know? So if it creates a harm to my perfectly healthy daughter, somebody, uh, just to be looking into that, somebody should really be held with a uh, responsible for, and as well as, you know, pick up the kids and everything like that, and especially my son, I don't pick him up. Could be like mom and everybody. I mean, that's she doesn't want to eat. It's the way he is, you know. Just a loving kid, just whatever. I'm just leave, you know. I don't know. I just feel like something more has to be done. And if, if if you could get in touch with Mark, that I do want to ask some specifics sure. about the issue, so we have a better understanding of what we need to correct on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Today marks three days that this board has taken away my children's ability to breathe and interact through facial recognition with their peers and teachers. You have taken away that ability from what, 4,000 kids? How many kids are in the district, Madam President? You have taken away that ability from 4,000 kids to breathe, learn, and interact with their friends in a safe, relaxing environment. An environment that everyone in this room was afforded. This is all while wearing a piece of dirty cloth collecting bacteria for seven hours a day, nine hours for my disabled son who has to be on a bus for an extra hour each way because they can't get him from Clifford Beach to Lloyd Road in time. This is also following almost two years of lost education. This is child abuse, plain and simple. Child abuse is federally defined by the following. Any recent act or failure to act on the part of a parent or a caregiver which presents imminent risk or serious harm. Imminent risk or serious harm. I think we met those requirements here. In the last six months, more people have died from the COVID vaccine than all other vaccinations combined over the last 20 years. Where is the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System has only reported 1% of its adverse events. You can still spread COVID if you're vaxxed. We all know this. John Hopkins just came out with a study with 48,000 kids showing that no healthy child died from COVID. The only kids that died had severe health conditions and shouldn't have been in school in the first place. There is still no proof that a child has infected a teacher or a student in the world or caused a death. There's no proof of it. You are mandating a medical device on our children that goes beyond the Department of Health recommendations. I have a question. Does anyone know on the board know the F FDA's statement on masks? I mean, we're putting masks on. Like, did somebody lower their mic? They're putting, yeah, somebody lower their mic. Because now I'm screaming into the mic, not hearing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, does anybody know the FDA's um, position on masks? Since we're masking all our children, does anyone know on the board? Can you tell me, Madam President? I don't know the FDA's. I mean, how can you not know that? We're going to mask all our children. Well, we are following the executive order from the governor. That is not our order. That mask mandate comes from the governor. It is a law that we must follow. We have okay. been very clear with us that if we do not follow that law, we will risk losing so our children. You know what? Then quit your job. How much money do you make? Is it worth it to go and all our children? I don't make any money. Okay, then why do it? Then why do it? Because I care about the children. I, I care about the children too. I have three children in this district. I care a lot about the children. And we have to follow the law. None of us here need this law. I know, but you're the ones that have to, have to follow it. 
have to vote it. Okay, well it's a horrible thing. If, if, if the governor came out with something saying that your, your daughter had to be married by people of his choice, would you follow that? I'm sorry, I'm not getting answer. Okay, let me finish. As stated by the FDA, the use of masks has not been proven for any antiviral protection. It says right on the box that it does not prevent disease and infection. You have a box up there if you read it. Has the board done any site studies on benefits, risks, or side effects from wearing a mask for seven or eight hours a day? Have any studies been done? As a board, we have not done studies. Okay. However, just coming back to the original point, it is an executive order that the governor has given us that we must follow. We do not make this rule. Everyone here may not even agree with that rule, but we have to follow it. You're the board of education, not the board I of health. I understand that. But we're not together. Uh, you know, I just want to end on a positive note for everyone here. You know, I think things are going to change. I think everyone's going to, everything's going to work out for us. And, you know, just don't be afraid. Keep fighting. You know it's right. And do it in your heart.
but are you going to continue to fight for us saying that this is it is insanity? Like are you going to continue doing that? Like not just this one letter we can send back and forth, it's going to be an ongoing thing so you know that you'll get come up number and other people might be aggravated and other people go to nap and then so we know that people are I'm sorry, real tight and I check they can all tell you. I, I lived through the research. So like, I check the numbers constantly, the vaccination rate, just because if we can have some sort of, but you know, like if we have facts and hard data that we can share with you, that would be great. You know, like if, if our numbers are going down, our vaccinations are really great, like there's things that we could potentially continue to push for. So yes. Uh, we'll, we'll continue. So yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 If I can just add something, um, when we drafted that letter that was sent, I'm an attorney, um, I do things by evidence, by proving things up, which is why Ms. Cole and the rest of the board, we look at these numbers. There may come a point when we ask for additional data from the community, um, voluntarily. And, but it's something that we're constantly looking at, understanding what you saw when the heat came up, uh, Dr. Mike, right there, and that hospital on the buses. We are constantly doing together um, and go back to what our original plan was, which was that stop. So I might have studied the football game, but the people they all wore the mask on the bus. So I don't know if they were aware that they started wearing masks or what was it doing, but we at least have the teachers maybe tell these kids that they don't have to wear the bus buses while they go on the ground before they go on the football. And I mean, I heard another person say that, you know, This week or not. Well, I, I, that, field, I, I apologize for that. I, I did not get the message out until 10 o'clock this morning. I had some other issues. I was the only one was the first thing that I yelled as soon as I got back to my desk. Yep. All right. I just want to make sure the teachers are aware that Well, let me try. 
Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.